The march toward liberty starts right now. This is Freedom Watch. Chaos and crisis at the White House. The president's attempt to shut down the oil industry, shut down by a federal judge. We will immediately appeal. The White House strategy in Afghanistan, ripped by the general in charge. The fallout is ugly. War is bigger than any one man. See our interview with a colonel at the center of the storm. Big government bundling economics and warfare. Freedom Watch is on red alert. And we're talking to Congressman Ron Paul and John Duncan. And the immigration storm is raging in Arizona. Stop what you're doing! In our Fox Business Studios, dueling sheriffs Joe Arpaio, Richard Mack. One's tough on illegal immigration and is getting tougher. The other's getting tough on threats to the Constitution and to human freedom. Plus our all-star freedom fighters with libertarian icon Barry Goldwater Jr. taking on this week's assaults on the United States Constitution and a Washington lawmaker who may be assaulting taxpayers. The House will not extend the tax cut. The principles at stake. That government is best which governs least. The people are entitled to a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution. The Constitution was written to keep the government off the people's backs. Freedom Watch, Arpaio, Mac, Goldwater, Fall. The struggle continues now. Welcome to the show. I'm Judge Andrew Napolitano. I'll be talking to Congressman Ron Paul and Congressman John Duncan next. But first to our freedom file. Rolling Stone magazine made waves with its story about General McChrystal this past week, not long after becoming head of U.S. operations in Afghanistan, criticizing the president and vice president for their handling of the war. The president is the commander in chief of the military. And military men traditionally refrain from open criticism of their commander in chief. So, this has been a scandal, a scandal that ended General McChrystal's career. What should perhaps be a greater scandal, though, is the fact that U.S. forces are still mired in Afghanistan nearly nine years after this war began, making it now the longest war in U.S. history. We'll talk to experts on that topic later in the show. In another blow to the president, he was reminded this, this week in a ruling by federal judge Martin Feldman that he does not have the legal authority to stop all oil drilling off the U.S. coast without giving lawful reasons for it. As our Freedom Fighter panel will discuss later in the show, this is good news for the economies in the Gulf states, but it's even better news for fidelity to the Constitution. Speaking of fidelity to the Constitution, with us are two members of the House of Representatives who are among the greatest defenders of the Constitution in Washington today. Congressman John Duncan of Tennessee and Congressman Ron Paul of Texas, welcome. In this country during crises, does the rule of law still apply to, say, big oil companies, Congressman Paul? Well, let's hope so, but uh, sometimes you, you wonder about it. I don't think the president is as concerned about the rule of law as some of us. But uh, for him to just claim that he can close down all the oil drilling in the Gulf of Mexico is, uh, you know, an outrage. But it is rather symbolic of where we are today, and that is presidents just do executive orders. Matter of fact, this commission he set up that I'm not too happy with wasn't even an executive order. It just appears, you know, and the Congress just goes along with it. It's that kind of stuff. A like government's really out of control. But uh, the good side of this, it's the American people are waking up, and that's what this uh, freedom movement is all about. People have had enough of it, but they don't seem to be getting the message here, and maybe it'll take November for them to get the message. So I'm hoping that that will happen, that uh, the American people will keep the pressure on right. Washington. And with the bankruptcy, you know, of this country, staring us in the face, I think uh, the American people are going to get even more concerned. Congressman Duncan, uh, earlier uh, last week, your uh, colleague from Texas, Congressman Barton, said the president perpetrated a shakedown when he intimidated $20 billion uh, out of BP, just cough it up so that a political appointee could distribute it. Do you agree with that characterization? Well, first of all, uh, Judge, let me tell you that I was a judge for seven and a half years in, in uh, Tennessee, and I've always admired the great work that you do, and I was pleased that this uh, uh, judge uh, 
in Louisiana ruled that there was no evidence to support uh, the president's uh, moratorium. I'm not uh, going to defend BP, uh, and I know that our legal system will make them pay uh, for everything that they uh, are responsible for. But I said in a speech on the House floor uh, last week that uh, we shouldn't let environmental radicals who uh, I've noticed always seem to come from very wealthy or very upper income families uh, shut down our entire economy. They uh, oppose drilling for any oil, digging for any coal, cutting any trees, producing any natural gas, and they're right. hurting a lot of poor and lower income and working people in this country by destroying jobs and driving up prices, and that's my main concern. Congressman Paul, uh, Congressman Duncan makes a good point, but when someone defends BP's right to due process, it's right not to have the government intimidate $20 billion out of them. That is not a defense of BP's behavior in the Gulf, is it? BP should pay for all the damage it caused, but it should pay for it under the law, not under some ad hoc system that the president and the vice president just concocted for this crisis. Yeah, and this is what's so bad about our system. You know, if you take the position you defend the rule of law and it sounds like you're defending BP, then the entire country jumps on you, the political system. You know, they, they jump on Joe Barton and they jump on everybody. But that, that's an issue of political correctness. What if, what if he'd have used the word pressured? Or, ah, he twisted his arm a little bit and made him, you know, do this. Then all of a sudden you could check with the PC police and see if you could say that. But uh, this, this is really the problem. They just jump on this and uh, they won't look at things on the merit. So if you defend the Constitution and the rule of law, and it sounds like you're giving some rights to BP, that doesn't mean that, that we're, we're sympathetic to BP, we're sympathetic to the system. And it may well be that the $20 billion might uh, even limit, uh, you know, the scope of uh, what BP has to pay. Got it. What I don't like is big business and big government being in bed together. And for some reason, I'm very suspicious of some of these agreements because BP is not a free market company. I mean, they depend on our military and they depend on us and they like cap and trade. So I, I'm very suspicious of the whole mess. Congressman Duncan, you have rightly yes. pointed out that the president was, uh, was motivated by his desire to, to please the extreme environmentalists uh, when he closed down the Gulf. And you were right to point out that Judge Feldman in Louisiana said he doesn't have the authority to do it. What do you fear the president might do next as a consequence of this crisis in the Gulf? Well, he's uh, the most uh, uh, far left wing uh, uh, president that we've ever had in the history of this country. And I can tell you that, uh, that we don't have a far left uh, nation. I agree with everything that uh, Congressman Paul just said, I don't like this uh, extremely big business, big government uh, duopoly in which uh, uh, the main uh, people that benefit uh, from big government are the bureaucrats who work for the government and extremely uh, uh, big business. But we have to realize, uh, I, I love clean air and clean water as much as anybody. And I'll tell you though, that uh, only in a free market, free enterprise system can you generate the excess funds to do the good things for the environment that people want done. And if we let the Sierra Club and some of these other organizations and the president take us so far to the left that we totally socialize our economy, we will destroy uh, our economy and we'll uh, greatly reduce our standard of living. And we don't need to do that. And our people don't want us to do that. Congressman John Duncan, Congressman Ron Paul, fortunately, we still have courageous federal judges who will uphold the rule of law and the Constitution, as Judge Martin Feldman did earlier this week in New Orleans. Thanks very much for joining us, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you.